Here we're going to talk about other two standardized data mining processes called SEMA and Six Sigma. SEMA stands for Sample, Explore, Modify, Model, Assess process. So it's a five-step process. It's originally developed and promoted by SAS Institute. For those of you who doesn't know, SAS is arguably the most significant player in the world of analytics in the last 15, 20 years. They're still privately owned company. If I'm not mistaken, SAS is the largest privately owned software company in the world with revenues ranging somewhere around two to three billion dollars a year. And that's what they do. They started as a simple statistical analysis package for educational purposes. Now they are a gigantic analytics company with lots of conferences and probably 90% of the top 500 companies in the United States and around the world. They have offices all over the place. I work very closely with SAS Institute from educational initiatives. That's why I know a lot about their standardized processes. Now, SAS did not want to adapt CRISP-DM because they had their own version of the standardized process that they call SEMA. It's very similar to CRISP-DM, with the exception that it's somewhat narrower in scope and in context. It doesn't, for instance, get into business understanding or data understanding because it assumes that you already know your business, you already know whether or not you have the data, whether or not you can actually merge the data, and it starts with the sample. Sampling a subset of the data as opposed to going all the way back to problem definition. So it assumes that you already have the problem defined. And it doesn't actually get into the deployment of it because it assumes, again, that uh, once you find those invaluable patterns, you will deploy them into your business processes. The sample step in SEMA is somewhat questionable in data mining because in data mining, we don't sample. We use all of the data because we don't know what part of the data has this hidden gem that we are looking for, the knowledge nugget, if you will. So because of that, we use everything that's available to us because we can, in the old days when there was not computational resources in place, we used to sample data. Now we have the means in place to actually process very, very large data sets. So it suggests using small data sets, which kind of, to some extent, contradict with the very purpose and definition of data mining. SEMA, similar to CRISP-DM, is also highly iterative and repetitive with lots of feedbacks to make sure that every step does what it's supposed to properly before moving into the next step. Actually, if the results of the next step doesn't come out to be what's expected, you can always trace back and uh, in a uh, cyclic fashion, redo some of the uh, earlier tasks and steps. So this is how SEMA would look like. It starts with sampling, generating a representative sample of the data, basically, looking at the large data set and taking a portion of it and hoping that the portion that you're using is a true representation of the complete data set we often call population. So sample should be a good and true representation of population. Nobody can guarantee that, but you do what you need to do in the context of better sampling techniques that your sample actually represents what your population has as far as the, the patterns are concerned. Then sample leads to the next phase, explore. You look at the data, you visualize it, you look at the description on a variable by variable basis, you look at the distribution of the samples to make sure that everything is lined up properly, there is no anomalies. If there is, you need to fix and modify those data variables as well as those data samples. So modify is taking the outcome of the explore and actually massaging and pre-processing and transforming data into a form that is valid, consistent, and the form that can be consumed by the data mining algorithms. Then you move into the modeling phase where a variety of algorithms of different types of models 
how to apply data to make sure that you find the right algorithm, right model type for answering the question that started the process in the first place, which is not captured in SEMA, but you always have a loosely defined hypothesis, a problem statement that controls how you do what you do and what it is that you're looking for so that when you find it, the process will come to an end and turn into a deployment phase. So assess, in this case, actually looks at the models and makes sure that the models are designed properly and their accuracy, their cohesiveness, their validity is at par what's expected with respect to the business problem that's being addressed. So again, it's very similar to CRISPDM with the exception that it's a little more focused, uh, a little constrained, uh, smaller in scope and context, but most everything that's done in SEMA is very similar to the things that we do in CRISPDM. Here is a point-by-point -point comparison between SEMA and CRISPDM. In project initiation, CRISPDM has a phase called business understanding, whereas SEMA does not have anything because it assumes that you already have the initiation part completed, your problem definition completed. In the data access, Chris DM is call, calling it data understanding. SEMA is not getting into too much of the understanding and acquisition, merging of the data, but jumping right into sampling, exploring, and validating the data. Data transformation is called data preparation on Chris DM, and it's called explore and modify in SEMA where the anomalies are observed, identified, and, and modified and fixed before the modeling phase. Modeling phase is common to both. One is calling it model building, the other one is calling it to model. Project evaluation, testing and evaluation on the CRISPDM is very specific to look and see the outcome is actually mapping back into your business problem, whereas SEMA calls it assessment, but assessing only to model and there is no business problem matching issues discussed. So it's again, smaller in scope and it's very specific to the models that you build as opposed to going back and looking at the problem that you're trying to address and whether or not the models are generating outcome that's in line with the problem that you're trying to address. Project finalization, CRISPM has a phase called deployment SEMA does not have one because it assumes, again, that if the model is assessed and found valuable, it will eventually be deployed and be a part of the computerized decision support system in the organization. Now, the second process that we want to talk about here is called Six Sigma for data mining. Six Sigma is a very popular business management philosophy. Most of you have heard it probably. Actually, there is a derivative of that, Nine Sigma, kind of going beyond Six Sigma. Sigma represents variation. Uh, Six Sigma means everything that you do should fall within Six Sigma limits, meaning the undesirable outcomes should be minimized to the extent of very close to zero. Because if you look at plus and minus three sigma, which is six sigma range, what's outside of that is a fraction of 1%. So it's first introduced by Motorola in 1980s, again, for quality initiatives. In, and it has been since then proven to improve significantly quality outcomes. It promotes zero defects, zero tolerance, it focuses on reducing deviation, the variation, the sigma is what we call it oftentimes because variation is your enemy in production and service systems. You want to standardize systems in such a way that you produce the high quality of products and services every time that you produce them. So Six Sigma as a philosophy promotes perfection, never being satisfied with what you get, but look for something better. How can I improve my processes to go to a better and better state? And Six Sigma is encapsulated in a process called DMAIC, Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. And a variation of Six Sigma is also applied to data mining processes where the first step is defined, defining and understanding the 
business problem, mapping perfectly to business understanding. Then in the measure, measuring the suitability of the data and the quality and the validity of the data, feeding into step three, analyze, experimenting with different models and model types to generate answers or descriptions to address the business problem. Four is the improve, assessing the knowledge against the project goals and making sure that you're actually addressing the right question. If not, you're feeding backward in changing your model types, even feeding further backward to acquiring different data, enriching the data, and going back and forth to make sure that your problem that you defined is addressed and validated before moving into the control where you actually deploy the results into the business setting. So it's very similar to how CRISPDM does it, and it's an end-to-end -end process. The terminology is somewhat different, and what's kind of interesting and editive here in Six Sigma is that it's perfectionist in nature. It always looks for ways in which you can improve the model, you can improve the outcomes that you generate back to the business problem that you're trying to address and never being satisfied with the validity and accuracy that you're getting, always shooting for zero error, zero tolerance, zero defects, zero mismatch, if you will, between the model outcomes and the defined problem that started the process in the first place. Here is a poll that was taken by a large number of standardized data mining processes user. It's conducted by a site called KD Nuggets, knowledgediscoverynuggets.com. They have a ton of resources I would urge you to take a look at. And they actually have a lot of data sets. For those of you who doesn't have data sets to do data mining, you will find uh, links to data repositories on this particular site. And they do a lot of polls throughout the year. Every month they have a different topic. And they do this poll every few years as to which data mining processes people are most commonly using in the, in the industry. And their latest poll showed that CRISPDM is being used more than 60% of the people who took the survey, followed by my own, probably a derivative, a slight variation of CRISPDM, followed by SEMA and followed by KDD. The result is that CRISPDM is the process to follow unless you have something better that fits the needs and wants and the specific structures of your organization.